What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel by Order of the Peak Blinders, season six, episode number two. Almost forgot what season we were on right there. I almost forgot what episode. We've we been on, we're flying on two? through. Yeah, we watched the premiere last time. That God was, damn. Yeah, that was the last one. Jeez. Which, that was a really sad and heartbreaking episode because we saw what went down with Polly, Helen, the actor. We, I, as I said, I was going to do, I looked it up and she actually passed away with breast cancer as she was filming for season six, which heartbreaking and tragic and so sad to like find out that information because I actually hadn't even known that she had passed Yeah, and seen her in a bunch of different things lately and obviously a huge fan of the Harry Potter movies and seeing her in Mission Impossible and then her amazing role in this show. It's just hearts go out to the family. It's just sad to see that happening. But I, I feel like within the show... Her death is obviously going to have a really big impact on everything that's happening. Michael has vowed revenge, blaming Tommy, and just the whole impact, seeing the way Arthur's responding, seeing how Tommy has responded. It's Polly was a massive character and really important to a lot of people in the show. Yeah. And even just not even talking about the actor who's obviously going to be very missed, but Polly as a character within the show and this last season is going to be very much missed. Yeah. And the relationship now between Michael and Tommy is super interesting. It's very destroyed. Yeah, we got like a four-year time jump, and Tommy's now sober. He's not drinking. He looks like his senses are heightened because of like that bar scene that went down where he was going to have a meeting with Michael and all of his new goons. He shot a bird in mid-flight, which was absolutely insane. Yeah, it was. It was really. So no alcohol. It's kind of something new for Tommy Shelby. But obviously his mind is sharper too because he played the shit out of Michael and oh Gina. Oh my God, yeah. That was so much fun to watch that play out because Tommy's just sitting in this room by himself. Michael shows up with these dudes, trying to be super scary and intimidating. And Tommy, per usual, is just there letting things play out. Killing keep, it. Keeping cool as a cucumber and just not letting anything rattle him. And then getting Michael arrested for opium was like... It, so perfect. It's like the you look up the, in the dictionary, you don't know who you're messing with, and that scene right there is the epitome of that. Yeah. Because Michael is all confident and cocky, thinking he's like this big bad dude now, and it's like, nah, Tommy's still got you wrapped around his finger. Word. He's still playing you. And you didn't realize it. And then that whole conversation with Gina, when when he showed up to her place, super colorful. Like It, it felt weird seeing Tommy in such a colorful, bright place, because obviously at home it's... You see him walking the streets. It's usually dark. The fire's usually blaring behind him. It was another one of those scenes where Gina's like all cocky and like, oh, I got the I all this and that. I think it was so perfect when he fucking... Dropped the bomb on her. Yes. When her <laughs> face went to, ah, to, oh, fuck. Yeah. That perfection. So good. And just watching that whole thing play out was so good. And I mean, Tommy, he's always been really, really good with the strategies. He's been able to handle things. He has great foresight, being able to plan ahead. And I mean, it was the epitome of that in this episode. Yeah, Wouldn't be me. Yeah. Can't plan for shit. I mean, he absolutely <laughs> punked Michael and Gina and just seeing where that goes is going to be really interesting now. The episode ended with a little bit of a panicky moment. Yeah. Where he was on the phone with Lizzie, their daughter's not feeling well because they were planning on coming to visit him, and she can't make the trip now. Ruby is feeling sick, and during one of her fever dreams, she was saying some stuff in Gypsy, and it freaked Tommy out. And he's like, I'm leaving, I'm coming there now, we gotta figure this out, and he didn't reveal to us what those signs might mean, but it definitely was bad. You don't see Tommy flustered like that very often. Mm -hmm. And for him to like drop everything to go see what's going on and go take care of his family, it's pretty wild. So that was a pretty insane first episode of season six, the last season, which is Sad. still crazy to think about. Yeah. But yeah, it, it feels like we're in for another ride with the Peaky Blinders in, in the final season. I would agree. Ready to check out episode two? Oh, yes. Let's go. There will be a war in this family and one of you will die. Oh, Polly. You've been too busy to punish the people who killed her. How is the family? Aw, the smile. Aw, oh, she's okay. Come here. You don't see Tommy smile like she's that very adorable. much. She's adorable so much. Right, before we do anything else, we're gonna go for a drive. Let's go. Oh boy. I'm assuming this is going to be one of his uh, gypsy doctors. 
to evaluate what's going on. That's mm -hmm. my guess. I'm glad she's up and running around. Yeah. Uh oh. oh. Tommy, it was all good. Everything's clear. That is a relief. Don't breathe on me though. You just vomited. So. <laughs> when did you last sleep? Not much since we last spoke on the phone. And now you know Ruby is all clear. You can sleep. Yeah. Okay, I'm like, I don't believe that. That Ruby's results are clear. But still, you act asleep. I will speak to Johnny, and I will speak to Esmeralda. We could be on holiday. We could be up a mountain in America. That wouldn't have been possible. The man I'm dealing with is coming to London. I need to be there. No escape. Never. Literally. <sighs> One last deal to be done. He never It'll sleeps. be difficult. Difficulties aren't to be expected. This is why I must move from item to item. You would have thought, like, after he stopped drinking, he would be able to get some sleep. No, not even then. You know, you talk as if you're watching everything on the screen. When we go home, when we go home, I'll give the kids to Francis, and then you and me will go to bed. And I will be the next item. Dang. Shit. That's so brutal. I mean, everything that he's responsible for, and like, I don't know how I would sleep with that much stuff going through my brain. Right. Tommy! Tommy! Oh, what the fuck? Oh no. What in the hell? Oh my god. What's the blood from? Where? He cut glass. I know, but like, oh, oh. Sh all over. Oh, shit. He was seizuring on the glass. It is four years, one month, and six days since I had a drink. Holy shit. This is this the first time? Once on the ship back, not as bad. So he's having seizures? Related to his PTSD from the war. It could be a combination of things. He could have, you know, Plus illnesses. Flashbacks. Well, yeah, but it could be from all the drinking that's catching up to him. I'll even though he stopped. This Boston business is done. Then we rest. Everything is a, and then we rest. And then we rest. Before we end this planning meeting and send you out into the rain, we have a surprise. He just arrived back from a trade mission to America. He came back early and he has insisted on addressing you volunteers in person. Your Labour representative for South Birmingham, Mr. Thomas Shelby MP. I made the comment, I think, at the end of last season that he didn't look well. Yeah. Like, I wonder if he's, like, sick and he's just hiding something. Could be. <laughs> I bring with me on the train from London a message. No, 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 not a message. An instruction. You must be silent. You must say nothing about the present situation in this city. But those in greener pastures, they may speak. You must push. Because the king and all the king's horses and all the king's men <laughs> want you to be Couldn't silent. Couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again? Oh. But it is you, my friends, who must suffer the cuts in wages yeah. and in welfare and in dignity. You soldiers who have fought in France, you are traitors if you speak up. Silence! Yeah. He's a really good talker. No silence for me because I have heard your voices and I will gather up every single one of those cries and I will take them with me on the train back to Westminster and let them try and silence that, eh? Yeah, Thomas Shelby, no silence. Let's go. Good speech, dude. <laughs> He's pretty good at this thing. Yeah. I'm the king, remember him? Uh-oh, what's about to happen? I don't know. Oh, she's with Arthur. Does Arthur know who that is? He has to, correct? Is that the meeting that he was talking was about that he had? Silence. Save your voices. You're gonna need them. 
on Saturday when we rally together. He said, save your voices, y'all. Chill. Raise the roof. <laughs> Lorna McKee. Battalion commander for Mana Iore. You both have reasons to hate me and to want to seek revenge for the killing. Shh. Don't bring it up. We do not mention the name of the dead in company. Business comes before issues of vengeance. I'm a lover departed. You understand and approve. Let's go, boys. Our agreement was we meet in a crowded place. No need for crowds. We need you alive. A little nervous. You know, Mr. Shelby, even though we've been doing business for a while, we've never met in person. You spoke with passion and compassion. You understand forgiveness and you drink water. <laughs> Yet I heard from many reliable sources that you have a reputation for moral turpitude. I like that word, turpitude. It's a good name for a rice horse. Oh, there you go. Say hey. You don't know what it means. I know what it means. It means you fuck people. Okay, remember, you know what? I don't like that word anymore, <laughs> never mind. It means you covet and steal and burn all principles for the sake of self-interest. Well, I'm changing, Lorna McKee. My organization is also changing. So what happened in Boston? Jack Nelson said no. Are we accepting no as an answer? These are letters written to and by Jack Nelson over the last three months. That train. This is a private letter from the President of the United States. Where the fuck did you get this? <laughs> my racehorse, Model Turpitude. It's just one of many in my stables. Jack Nelson's coming to London. He's coming to measure the strength of support for fascism in Britain. He'll report back to the President. And how does that help us? In this letter to his son, Jack Nelson expresses strong support for fascism. He's got all the receipts. To a friend in Berlin, he says some, uh, Interesting things about Jews. Dang. All the receipts. He's coming to find proof that fascism will prevail. And you and I are going to help him in that task. Okay. I thought you were a socialist. Since I've entered politics, I've learned that the line doesn't go out from the middle to the left and the right. It goes in a circle. <laughs> you go far enough left, eventually you'll meet someone who's gone far enough right to get to the same place. Working class socialists like me, working class nationalists like you. The result, national socialism, and that's me. In the middle, just a man trying to make an honest living in a very dark world. He's so interesting. I know, I love the way he talks. You were friends in Dublin, Lorna McKee, who were actively fighting for a fascist Ireland, and you were acting on their behalf. When Jack Nelson comes to London, I can give him access to Oswald Mosley and to fascist sympathizers. Oh. Fascism is quite the thing among the very best people. And with your help, I could also offer him Dublin. And you think this will allow us to ship our merchandise to Boston? And there may be other benefits for your cause. All you have to do is sit with Jack Nelson and talk to him about a new golden age and let him put a pin in the map of Ireland for the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. Him and his plans. Honestly. Came to collect Arthur and put him to bed. Found him in Garrison Lane with a syringe in his hand. Fucking Arthur, dude. A friend loves at all time. Brother is born for adversity. <laughs> Proverb 1770. Interesting. Well, I have two brothers in need. But yours is the more urgent, Tommy. Will you come with me? Uh, so, Laura McKee, are you going to help me change the world? Mr. Shelby, this meeting is not what I expected. Never is. <laughs> My answer is yes. The answer is always yes. Anna knows what's up. <laughs> so we got a Mosley mention. Yeah. What I found in the syringe was empty, sleeping it off on the cobbles. Shit, Tommy. It's all under control, Ida. Well, I am not under fucking control. I'm not you, and I'm not Polly <laughs> either, even though I'm trying to be. I heard everything you were saying in there. This will be the end of it, Yimmy. It's always this will be the end. Any incidental rewards for my good work 
will be welcome, but you will get your fair share, I sister. Just... And by being among the fascists, I can undermine them. Polly would approve. She was a solid socialist. I know it's too late for this, Tom, but this doorway, this same fucking doorway. We used to come here for Dad's beer, and we were so little it took two of us to carry one bucket. I yeah, remember. Look at us now, eh? Fucking look at us. Take a good look, Tom, because one of us isn't going to be here for long. Shh. If you don't want to help me carry the bucket, then I wouldn't blame you. But this is my mission, and I will have no limitations. Does he ever have limitations? Where are you, Tom, my big brother? You know, you used to stop sometimes and laugh. Do you even remember this place? Walk into the garrison like a stranger and you sip fucking water. I'm alive, Adam. And you're still looking for trouble big enough to kill you. I think you might have found it. You have to carry this bucket on your own. Wow. I mean, I get it. Totally. The other half dead in the rain in Garrison Alley, and the other has no limitations. That was Polly's message. There's gonna be a war and someone's not gonna make it out. That's an interesting shot with the red. Jeez. Mm -hmm. It's like they mentioned Polly a lot. I couldn't imagine what this cast was going through. I know. Dealing with that and trying to like still do a job, you know? I wonder if anyone's ever cut their hand checking his hat. Oh. Like, because they swipe through and they're like... And Mr. Like, Solomon's no longer oh. tolerates the smoking of tobacco in his presence. I think it's really funny that you say that shit because it's exactly what I thought. I was like, shh, fuck. I'm so glad that I've seeped into your brain at this point. All we of my are, we weird are one. thoughts, right? All my <laughs> weird, like, what, the f what are you thinking thoughts are now in your brain. You would have never been like, I wonder if they cut their hand. <laughs> Look at this shot. Yeah. The lights are turning on, music playing. Wow. wow. That's really pretty. Can I get that kind of music when I enter the room? <laughs> That's amazing. You get, what does the fox say? Ding, 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 ding. No, <laughs> I was so happy that Alfie it's, is still uh, in the show. The tenor in full passion reminds me of crying out of Italian soldiers when they had my bayonet inside them. Oh, Jesus. Ever since my own death, I have been somewhat haunted by it. Right, instead of fighting these voices. Oh, this looks better. Do not like that. No, no. Were well, you not told I have a condition? Well, I was told, Alfie. Is that you have withdrawn and let you spend your days alone. He's gonna get really pissed. Obsessing about opera singers. Opera is not fucking singing, is it? It's not singing. It is the sound that people make before work. Do not allow smoking because I do need to see fucking clearly. Or do you sense weakness in his world? Not a sense of weakness, no, Alfie. Right. A certain knowledge of it. Since you've been sat here writing an opera, a member of your family has died. Charles Solomons, your uncle, he ran all the narcotics, bootlegging, prostitution, gambling syndicates out of East Boston. But last January, poor old Charlie, well, he was shot in the cotton club in the lavatory. Oh, shit. And yet you did nothing, Alfred. He's so scary sometimes. He's just so unpredictable. <laughs> now, my opera is called America. America is my fucking masterpiece. Your uncle is dead. Boston is gone. And you, once the big man who ran Camden Town, now can't even extinguish another man's cigarettes. Holy shit. I feel dude. like that's a. Why are you challenge? poking? Yeah. You need favors, Alfie? I need a fucking final act, right? Just a final fucking act for my opera. I think I may have written your final act. Why don't you sit down? And have a listen, eh? The Bane really comes out when he gets loud. Yes! What a shot. I have five tons of pure, refined opium sitting in one of my warehouses in Liverpool. I have men willing to distribute it in Toronto, Quebec, New York, and Boston. Damn. The income would be immediate and would shift the balance of power in Boston back in favor of the Solomon's family. 
In the final act that I'm giving you, Alfie, it is you who takes the revenge. What would you say? The Irish, they're being difficult. The Italians are not an option. Also, Alfie, you are my friend. Did you regret it? No. <laughs> I'll take you and knock them down. Build houses for the needy, the deserving. Yeah, well, the, uh, the Irish have always been difficult, Tommy, haven't they? Uh, about fucking 700 years. <laughs> you know, I once saw an Irishman arguing with the statue of Oliver Cromwell in Parliament Square. And the argument went on for quite a while, actually, well into the night as his little voice echoed all around the Houses of Parliament. Oliver Cromwell was reluctant, somewhat, to answer his legitimate questions. He punched the statue and broke his fucking hand. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> what? How come you can remember so much about what happened 200 years ago that you just can't remember what fucking happened last night? That's a question I ask all the damn time. I mean, not the 200 years part, but the what did I do yesterday? That'd be impressive. Honestly. You should probably have me uh, researched if I can remember something that happened 200 years ago. I love the, literally every interaction between Tommy and Alfie is amazing. Every time. Jack says a few more weeks and you'll be free. When do you travel to London? That looks like a fucking nice ass setup, by the way. Right? I came to say goodbye. When you go to London, stay away from the devil. Lock your fucking ears if you have to. I'll be with you. I've been thinking about you. Uh oh. Nope, don't do that. Only you. This is a conjugal visit. <laughs> I have no interest in a dead man. Oh. We're going there with it, huh? Jack says he has to die. Well, you tell Jack to wait. If anyone's going to kill Tommy Shelby, it will be you. I know. I told Jack. This actress is, she's so good in everything. God damn, I want to hate her so bad. And in return, he can collect the cash that Tommy won't. Five million dollars. The devil will be dead. That's a cool shot, too. The future belongs to us. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna work out for you. Oh, and, uh, Michael. I just don't think it's gonna work out that way. Every night, midnight in Boston, 5 a.m. in London, I'll be wide awake in my big, wide bed, and you'll be wide awake in this prison cell. What is she playing at right now? And our souls will come together, and we'll fuck. I won't need an alarm clock, and you won't sleep until I'm done. Midnight, folks, 5 a.m. What? I'm lost on that one. Because we trust each other. Is there like code words being used about like I'm a breakout like, or something? Like, that's what I feel like. I feel like it's about a breakout, but also like she opened the door and then she closed it. Yeah. And then she's like, but I'm gonna be with you. She's fucking with him totally, it feels like. Literally. Not figuratively. She's literally fucking him. But it feels like a weird mind game. I don't know what she's I don't understand what she was doing there. I'm sure it'll all wrap itself up, but... Uh, he, he didn't look very concerned, though. No, he was like, whatever. Yeah. What is happening? Oh. Uh, it, if I was that actor, honestly, it'd be a little weird. It'd be a little weird seeing my face like that. You look absolutely terrifying, my love. Do me on it. What? <laughs> Just the way that she's like talking to him. Absolutely terrifying, my love. And like the way he fucking acts, the way he like has to like screw everybody. Like it just feels like one of those things. See, this is what I'm talking about. Like what the fuck? I wasn't sure we were gonna see him again. <sighs> but also I got a little bit of Ron Burgundy in there. You know? a terrible journey, Diana. When they're riding the unicorn. You fucking let me down. Whoa. The music is so fantastic. Yeah. Come on, Lizzie in the orange. Stop it. My fucking favorite. Sir, may I ask why a socialist MP would attend the fascist rally, sir? Mr. Mosley's constituency borders me own. We've worked together in the past. He was once a socialist himself. My role here tonight is to, to act as a bridge between ideologies. I'm in the middle. I'm simply here to remind my friend, Mr. Mosley, that the way the British people is compromised. We'll print that, pal. 
I mean, they're all in right now. They got like the Nazi thing going. Know, and the this is Nazis scary as shit, dude. Oh, it. Your condolences, will you? Do you know what? He'll be here with his mistress. Oh, his mistress. See, that's what I'm talking about. How did his wife die? I'd like to know. Fuck off, you dozy Oh, jeez. What is Arthur doing here? Oh, God. I was invited in. I agreed. Arthur made me a promise. Two pairs were broken. Already? Jeez. <laughs> Fucking Arthur, dude. I don't know, but Johnny Dogs looks so nice. Get in. Get in. Come on, get in. My brother. How was we inviting me? I said, wear a black fucking shirt. Here you are. Lizzie. Come on. She's like, oh, my God. Please. This is my fault. We voted on getting involved in the opening trade. You voted no. I said no. Remember? Look at your brother. Alfie is gone. Alfie is gone. Oh, shit. You fucking slap me. Slap me. Yeah, get your shit together. I have to move between left and right, light and shade, and maintain the trust of both, and I cannot have me brother wearing a fucking black shirt on the cover of the Daily Mirror. If anyone takes my picture at this, they'll find a fucking camera under my heel top. What I do, Saint Kerry. I just got decisions to make about working with us. He doesn't know what you want. Holy shit, dude. This is wild. Johnny, take Lizzie to a seat. But I don't have an invitation, Johnny. Johnny, you're wearing a fucking black shirt. You can do what you like. Yeah. Go on. I'll follow you. Go on. <sighs> you get me a fucking drink while you're there. Um, that's not Arthur, okay? I, I, just, I couldn't even imagine the chaos that is in your mind while you're high on all this shit. Dude, how good of an actor is he, though? Honestly. He is playing this role like it is so believable and well done. Arthur, I'm not Christian, but I also believe in forgiveness. Get okay, yourself clean. Stay clean for two weeks. I'll write Linda another letter, because I know where she is. First, I need you back. I need me brother. Got a lot to do. I need someone to do the real work. Yeah. This feels like a bad omen, though. Holy fucking hell. fucking me! What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Oh, shit. Now let's go home. We have business. This is so insane. <laughs> Forget this American business. We've got enough. Not yet enough. Here she comes. Remember to smile. Oh, my God. She, I love that dress so much. Sorry. I'm obsessed. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he has truly earned your adulation. The future prime minister of this great country, Sir Oswald Mosley. Fuck off. Oh, what? This is so creepy. Hello? The fuck? Diana, this is Tony Shelby. Oswald's most recent and last ever mistress. Well, at least she knows. <laughs> Report to me, Shelby. Officially, Jack Nelson is in London to buy import licenses. And I'm officially his Roosevelt's envoy. Well, as you can see from this private letter, he is far from a neutral point of view. Individually, Jews are fine, but as a race, they stink. Elizabeth. Do you even know why the bridge to President Roosevelt is so important? I don't really know much about this business at all. But I have fucked your future husband. Okay. So I know lots of things about him. What the hell? I love Lizzie. <laughs> Few people want to meet Nelson or now. Mr. Shelby, from now on, can I call you Thomas? If no, you're bitch. Not. Of course we would. And we are very grateful for your efforts. But Mr. Shelby, before this enterprise goes any further, you really must do something about your wife. Like what? Oh, that's a shot. <gasps> Love that one. Oh, 
was hoping that was Tommy in there. It isn't. This is Shelby. Mr. Nelson. I came early. I wanted to come and take a look around this beautiful church. You're Catholic, Mr. Shelby. What else do we know him from? There was a way the Catholics are treated in my country that made me angry, made me what I became. What made you angry? Slowness in anything. I wanted to have everything already. To working class Catholic boys. Did they mess with you when you were small? Some man in the shadows. I carried a screwdriver and a blade, and everyone believed I had the power to lay curses. That's, there you go. First man I killed was a That's priest. massive. A Prussian boy with green eyes. He was already underground. When'd you last kill a man, Mr. Shelby? Four years ago, his name was Thomas Shelby. Okay. He drank whiskey. You want me to allow you to enter my city and deal narcotics that'll kill people? Cool shot. You're dealing whiskey. I recently read a report by the Vatican, actually, which said that whiskey disproportionately kills more of our Catholic brothers and sisters, whereas opium is the sedative more often chosen by Protestants and atheists. In return, there are people in England who you think I should meet? Yes. I'm here to buy import licenses. The booze of the blue blood elite. That looks like a church that the royals were married in. That is a massive church. I hear Shelby labels are favored by the working class. Indeed, in fact, of which I'm very proud. They say you're a, a poet, too. <laughs> there are some people in this country who I'd like to meet. Fascists. Not the ones in boots and black shirts, the ones in tuxedos. I know men who are friends of the cause. I also know men who are enemies of the cause. For many years now, I've been working closely with Winston Churchill in many different capacities. I have his trust. He is opposed to the rise of fascism. I can give you men of influence who support your cause. All this in return for access to South Boston? Alternatively, you can take on Churchill on your own without my intelligence. And I could sell me up to the Jews. You're a brave man, Mr. Shelby. Yep, yep. A war hero I hear. Every war hero I ever met, they're just someone who wanted to get themselves killed. The music. Do we have a deal, Mr. Nelson? How tall is I'll think Tommy? a great deal about what you've said. Or is that guy just really fucking tall? That was scary. It was interesting. With that breath. What the fuck? Oh dear. With the green eyes. Ruby. Ruby? Uh. I can hear voices. Oh, honey. Coming from up the chimney, the gray man. Holy shit. shit. Yeah. I was raised in a family that endured living conditions that would test the morality of even the most virtuous. Indeed, indeed, even the best of us would have our virtues trounced and thwarted by life in the meanness and the bitterness of an overcrowded British slum. Westminster 245. The time has come for change. Let in new lights. Build a new Jerusalem. Brick. By government owned brick. <laughs> oh no. Doctor. Holy shit. Mr. Shelby. This feels very like horror movie right now. It's the gray man. He says he's coming for me. Hell he's no. Daddy as well. Oh, what? Oh, shit. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my god, it's, it's, oh my god. The back and, oh my god.
Oh. Oh, shit. The way that scene was done was amazing. Holy shit, that was all in his head. Hello? Tommy, Tommy, she has the temperature of 101 and nothing is working. Is he? Please. Is he? Oh, that's a cool shot too. There's a ton of awesome shots in this. Like, this show is beautifully done. He said we shouldn't come close to her in case. When she coughs, there's blood. Ooh, that was creepy. Grace's picture in the background. This feels very haunted mansion. I will draw you to the number I gave you. For as my shall be lay. Uh oh. We're reaching out Damn to it. Esme. Damn it! The end of wow. a freaking episode. That I mean, the stuff with Ruby is like horror flick style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way that's all Very playing conjuring. out. Yeah, it's really creepy, and the idea that this gray man is talking to her and saying that he's coming for her and coming for him well, too, and essentially that gray man that was just coming for Tommy. That like, scene he's covered was covered in dirt, and yeah. he has green eyes. That scene was wild. That was him having like the vision flashback, but having it play out like he was in a suit in the tunnel, but it was all in his, there was no one actually there in his office. Yeah. The but like the way back and forth, the way it was even shot and edited, that was amazing, but horrifying at the same time. I'm going to be honest, the whole political stuff that Tommy's working on right now, I got to like let all that stuff digest mm -hmm. and figure out what the fuck is going on. Because it feels like it's all over the place right now. I also feel that same way. And also Gina, that whole conversation that was, was bizarre. Very, I'm sure there's a hidden message. I'm, I need to like hear it again or just continue watching. Cause yeah. I, I don't know if it was, I don't know if what's happening is intentionally confusing or if it's just something, just something's not grasping. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or just, I need to just review the episode again and, and see what exactly is going down. But like all the political, he like he continues, it feels like he continues to play the same type of game where he's connecting himself to people who he doesn't believe in what they're doing in an effort to bring them down. Right. Which is but, like, doesn't that look bad? Like from I mean, the public's view, the, the, the public's who are socialists, does that not look, I mean, as they were screaming at him yeah. as he was walking into the event. I think that's the risk he plays by but, doing this But stuff. like, doesn't Mosley get pissed or does Mosley think that he's just playing both sides? Right. To get more people on Mosley's side, or I, yeah, I struggle with that whole thing. I wasn't expecting to see Mosley. I don't know why. I, I mean, the time jump and the not mentioning him in the last episode, and I guess the whole assassination attempt never actually got connected to Tommy, which I found to be really interesting. But yeah, that whole situation, I need to let that digest a little bit and grasp exactly what he's doing because again tommy is pretty elaborate with his plans mm -hmm. and they could tend to get a little complicated sometimes but he's not telling us right maybe maybe so that's part work. of it yeah so that aspect of the story i need, just need to maybe think on it a little bit more and, and see where it's going but this whole thing with arthur is heartbreaking they've mentioned polly a couple times in this yeah. epi episode specifically Linda. in the way in the way ada's even talking is like she's done like she's just like i got family yeah. when is this gonna actually end it feels like the same stuff that tommy always says and has said in the past we're like this is the last one and we're done and we're out and the business is over like it's always the last one. i mean this is the last season so maybe he's being maybe honest this, about it yeah, this maybe time this truly is the last one yeah, yeah. It, it's just everything that he's involved in feels really really dangerous and thinking on it about what happened to ruby there the fact that she's coughing up blood, does that have any connection to Tommy throwing up earlier in the episode? Coming off of like the seizure, him throwing up, the gray man's gonna get you. How much of all of this is connected in terms of his well being or know. not well being? That's a good question. I'm and the sure. fact that they hit us and reminded us about what Polly said in terms of her vision of someone in the family's gonna die. It's going to be someone. One, one of you will die. And the fact that even Ada said it to him as well. So it feels like we're building towards something really bad. We're all cursed. Yeah. And I just, watching, 
every season Arthur has been going through it one way or another. Honestly. This feels like he's hit rock bottom at this point. And the fact that Tommy's like dangling the whole Linda thing for him to get better, that's pretty just, wild. Yeah, just he's doing whatever stay he can. good for two weeks and I'll write her another letter. Yeah, whatever he can to get his brother back and focused on... Because he needs... It, he's got a lot going on and he doesn't have a lot of support right now and he could probably use Arthur. I, I wonder where this Michael thing is going to go. I That... I do definitely want to go back and re-listen to what Gina was saying to him. It definitely felt like a breakout scenario. That's kind of the writing on the wall that I felt like I read. But, I mean, it felt like she was being very cryptic. Yeah. But also kind of like rubbing it in his face, the whole situation. But he had a response that wasn't negative, it felt like. Yeah. So. Not like, don't leave me, babe. It was just like. Smoking yeah. a cigarette, hanging out of the fucking... Exactly. Like, he kind of had a smirk on his face. Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of subtle things playing out that might be intentionally misleading or maybe a little confusing. Again, I need to review the episode again. But, I mean, the way this is building, the sounds in this episode and the music, like, the background noises and the music was so good. The breathing. Yeah. Again, I mean, like, we've had it in multiple episodes, but it's just like... It's just setting a tone. Yeah. Very, very dark tone. And everything that's going on with him and his daughter obviously is very dark stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm still waiting for him to kind of express what she said and what it potentially might mean. I I feel like it means something like is cursed. Right. But I don't know. And I think that's probably why he's going to get Esme involved and then maybe the conversation will happen there and it'll get revealed a little bit more in terms of what's going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, another really well done episode. I just... (laughs) The stuff that Tommy gets involved in is just so big and it just seems so intense and dangerous all the time. It feels like he's constantly putting himself in danger and I just, I love all of it. I think it's so, even when I don't fully grasp what's going on, oh, yeah, I don't care. I'm so yeah. engaged yes. and curious about what's playing out yep. that I just, I can't wait to see where the next episode goes. Same. So, Absolutely. you have I, any other thoughts? I don't care what they're talking about. <laughs> They can show Tommy Shelby cleaning for yeah. an hour and be like, oh my God, this is fascinating. Because <laughs> they'll probably have it shot really well. <laughs> yes, they will. Very interesting. So, <laughs> anything else? No. All right, you guys, share all your thoughts. See you guys later for the next one by Order of the Peaky Blinders. Do it now. We'll see you guys later for the next one. Have a good one. Bye.